It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. Open your Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, and we're going to talk about um, who you are in Christ, which is uh, the gift of righteousness. Yeah. You said um, three things about righteousness that really stood out to me this morning when I was looking at your book. <clears throat> righteousness, number one, is a free gift. Mm -hmm. Number two, righteousness is a legal declaration. Mm -hmm. We've been talking about these three things, and the last one is righteousness is a spiritual force. So it's a free gift. It's a legal declaration by God. Yeah. And it is a spiritual force. Yeah, and since it is a legal mm -hmm. declaration, in other words, um, God did not compromise his own righteousness. He actually, uh, Jesus, paid the penalty in full for our sin mm -hmm. and our wrongs. And so God did not just give us righteousness. Right. The righteousness that we have was produced and paid for by the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross through his blood. So that's why we say it's, it's legal. In other words, you're not an escaped criminal sneaking out of prison and running and hiding and the dogs chasing you. In other words, you walk out in the free light of day because you have been declared not guilty right. and you've been declared righteous and you don't even have to wear the orange uniform anymore <laughs> because you come out in the light. So you didn't break because, out. Yeah, you didn't sneak out or break out. God brought you out legally mm -hmm. through the blood of the cross and through the death of Christ. And so what happened on the cross, the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ is the center of the gospel. And so uh, it's legal, paid for, so the devil, who's the accuser, all you got to do is say, this is legally produced, and you overcome Satan, who's the accuser, mm -hmm. by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. So those are key things to know, yeah. because the righteousness, which is a free gift, has opened heaven. Mm -hmm. We have access to all that God has and all He's doing. We can pray. We, can, um, we have so much abundance mm -hmm. through the Word of God in this position of righteousness, yeah. we need to understand how it works and how to uh, access and lay hold on all the benefits of our righteousness in yeah. Christ. So it is a free gift because it was legally paid for by the blood of Jesus, but it is also uh, God's nature and it becomes a spiritual force that stops sin's dominion mm -hmm. are, are Satan's strategies because by the blood of Jesus you've been made the righteousness of God in Christ. So 2 Corinthians 5.21 is kind of where we're starting every day. Yeah. So if you have your Bible there, 2 Corinthians 5.21 it says, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So that's an in him or in Christ scripture. So Jesus who had never sinned, knew no sin, was made to be sin for us. Wow. All right, now when he was made to be sin, then he also took everything sin produced. Mm -hmm. So that means he not only was made to be sin, but he also took our sickness, he took our disease, he took our shame, he took our poverty, and he died our death. He took our place as our substitute. So when he was made to be sin for us, says that we might be made. So in the mind of God, he said, now Jesus on the cross was made to be sin for us that we, every believer, might be made the righteousness of God in him. In other words, God wow. produced a new kind of righteousness, mm -hmm. which is his very own righteousness, which he approves of based on his high standard of what righteous is, and God produced it himself through the death of Christ, through the blood of Jesus. So it meets the standard that's required. The God kind of righteousness. From God, yeah. So it's not a human uh, righteousness where you say, well, I did this and I didn't do that. It's based on what God 
expects and requires or defines righteousness mm -hmm. as, which includes your heart, your motives, your mind, your life, everything about you. So Jesus was made to be sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in Christ or in him. So God would not make an unrighteous new creature. Verse 17, right up above that, right. it says that we are new creatures in Christ. Old things have passed away. Everything, everything has is. become new. So God would not make an unrighteous mm -hmm. new creature because he already has an unrighteous old, old creature. creature. So the moment mm -hmm. you make Jesus your Lord and now you're in Christ, he says you cannot be anything other than the righteousness of God in Christ. <laughs> I love some different translations you have here in, in our book, Divine Approval. Uh, Blackwell's translation, it says, in our behalf, God identified him with everything in the whole realm of sin mm -hmm. in order that by trusting him, we might be recipients of God's kind of righteousness. All right, so say the first part again. In our behalf, God identified him, Jesus. Ah, uh, see there, here's your identification. Uh -huh. So God identified Jesus with everything in the whole realm of sin, that we might be made recipients of the God kind of righteousness. Mm. Wow, that's the blood of Jesus. That's the blood. That's the power of the blood. So when you honor the blood, you honor that blood by boldly confessing mm -hmm. that the blood of Jesus cleanses you from all sin, but also in 1 John 1, it says it cleanses you from all all unrighteousness. Mm -hmm. In other words, not only are you cleansed from sin or failure or whatever you've done wrong, but actually sin consciousness has been replaced with a righteousness consciousness because in the new covenant, you're not only redeemed from sin, but you're redeemed from sin consciousness. That means in the Old Testament, the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin. Right. But you are forgiven or your sins are covered or you're forgiven, right? But in the New Testament, the blood of Jesus actually not only removes sin, not only removes all unrighteousness, but removes sin consciousness or the guilt and the shame of sin is removed by the power of the blood of Jesus. And so you see this in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 20, I'm sorry, Hebrews 9, 12, mm -hmm. where it says, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but right. with his own blood, mm -hmm. he entered in once into the heavenly place and he obtained eternal redemption for us. Yeah. So Jesus in Hebrews 9, 12, mm -hmm. he obtained not the blood of bulls and goats, but with his own blood. Right. He entered in once for all time, once for every problem, once for every blessing, and Jesus took his blood into heaven, into the holy place, right in the very presence of God. He took his blood in there after he's raised from the dead, Amen. and he secured eternal redemption for us, or he purchased our freedom. Freedom from Satan's dominion, freedom from sin's dominion, but also freedom from everything sin produced, which would be Christ redeemed us, so don't have to be sick anymore. Don't have to be bound anymore. Don't have to be ashamed anymore. Mm -hmm. Don't have to be poor anymore. Right. In other words, all this is in one package in what Jesus did once when he went into heaven's holy place. He obtained eternal, eternal. redemption for us. But go to verse 14, Hebrews 9, 14. How much more shall the blood of Christ, boy, I thank God for the blood. Yes. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who but through, through the, the eternal, eternal spirit, spirit Wow, what yes. does that mean? Yes. All right, so Jesus in his uh, eternal spirit and through the spirit of God, that, that shows you that the blood of Jesus and the eternal spirit of God are eternally connected. They right. are inseparable. So that Jesus took his blood into heaven and it says, and through the eternal spirit. So the blood of Jesus, or like I say this, where the blood flows, the spirit of God goes or where the blood is applied, are honored, the Holy Spirit works, or the Spirit of God. And so Jesus, the God-man, and his blood is divine blood, the blood of God. And so how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience? 
So now he says the blood through the Spirit of God reaches into the conscience mm -hmm. of the believer mm -hmm. and purges your conscience from dead works or dead religion or dead attempts to try to make yourself better. And so the blood purges you from the, from the struggle uh, and, and from sin consciousness or the blood silences the voice of self-condemnation and the blood reaches into the conscience and purges you from a evil or guilty conscience. Right. Same thing in Hebrews 10, 22. And he says, and that blood purges from evil conscience and now you can serve the living God. The living God. You know what, there's so many um, religions and there's so many methods and, mm -hmm. and Christianity has kind of been morphed into something People mix what a lot does of that. Yeah. It doesn't look like this at all, and they mix all kinds of uh, self-help, psychology, or whatever, and they have all kinds of names for this and that. I was just listening on the internet, and I thought, oh, that man needs the simplicity of the gospel. He, Paul does call it the yeah. simple gospel message. How that there were two men, <laughs> the first Adam. Mm -hmm. and the last Adam, mm -hmm. and how we were identified with one, and then through Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. we passed out of darkness, mm -hmm. out of condemnation. There's a lot of people ba carrying around baggage, mm -hmm. and you know, they're, they're just weighed down with, with memories and, and things that have happened to them, or something somebody else I did to them. I could, I wished I would, uh, yeah. try, or see in How do we get free from that? And you talked about it's a free gift. Righteousness is a free gift. And it was produced by God, and it's legal. So God did not break us out illegally out of the, the uh, bondage that we were in. And you used uh, mm. like a prison breakout. But he legally redeemed us with his own blood with a high price. So the we blood. need to know. So that's why Romans 3.25 says, through faith in his blood that we have remission of sin, or the Amplified say absolute remission, which means not only forgiveness, it means cancellation of penalty and the removal of guilt. You've been declared not guilty mm -hmm. through faith in the blood of Jesus. So you can't have faith without accurate knowledge because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Mm -hmm. So once you know what the Scriptures teach about the blood, now you have revelation knowledge. And the devil is probably more afraid of revelation knowledge than just yes. about anything because that's the source of our faith. And the gates of hell can't prevail against yeah. the power of revelation knowledge of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And then so he says through faith in the yes. blood, which means you have revelation knowledge, accurate knowledge, and then faith requires action. And the moment you act on the Word of God, God makes Himself responsible for your results. In other words, when you act on the Word. So the initial act of faith is your confession of faith. That's how you got to say that Jesus is Lord. And your confession of what the blood of Jesus does for you, what it does in you, and that confession moves your mouth, which is the initial act of faith right. in speaking. You say, I believe. Lord, I believe. I confess with Jesus my mouth. Jesus died on the cross. Jesus is Lord. God raised him from the I'm dead. I'm redeemed by his blood. Hallelujah. How does that song I go we, we sing all the time? It goes, that? are you washed in the blood? In, in the, the soul cleansing, cleansing blood, blood of, the, of lamb. the lamb. Are, are your garments spotless? Are, are they, they white, white as snow? snow? Are, are you washed in, in the blood of, of the, the lamb? lamb? And then it goes, have you been to Jesus, Jesus for the cleansing, cleansing fl flow? Flow. Have, are, you, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Well, I need are you trusting see. daily? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? <laughs> probably I don't somebody, know the probably words somebody can correct us on that. But are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? It's in my, in your book, uh, the Bloodline of a, Tra a Champion. Yeah, the Bloodline book. There's a whole bunch <clears throat> of hymns in the back. I love of that those book. hymns. We, uh, you know, so, so are you washed in the blood? And so the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And that washing, the washing of regeneration, and that washing mm. reaches into your conscience or into right. your heart. 
and removes the guilt and the stain of sin. So let's look at Hebrews 9.26 real quickly if you have your That's Bible. Good. Hebrews 9.26 says, For then must he often have suffered, Hebrews 9.26, since the foundation of the world, but now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin <clears throat> by the sacrifice of himself. Mm. To put away or abolish or bring sin to nothing. My. Hebrews 9, 26. Mm -hmm. He did that once. Now, in the end of the world, he says, that, that he might put away, abolish, there's some really great translations of that, uh, put away sin, break the power of sin, bring the effect of sin to nothing, that God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. Amen. And we covered that yesterday mm -hmm. by the sacrifice of himself. And he uses the word once, 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 and look at verse 28. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time yeah. without sin unto salvation. He says, now we are looking for the return of Jesus, that he is Lord. And he says, we're watching and waiting for his return. Now look at Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 1. We're still reading right here in the King James. He says, for the law, talking about the Old Testament, and some, the Living Bible says, think that it's because of the law, the, the old system. The law, having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the things, can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year, continually make the comers thereunto perfect. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In other words, he's saying the law and its whole system and its sacrifices were imperfect. Yeah. And incomplete. they never worked. And they did not produce in, it says in the King James, the comers, other translation says the worshipers. The worshipers mm -hmm. are the one that were, people that were drawing near to God. He said the old system, the Old Testament system and the law and with its sacrifices year after year continually could not produce what God was wanting yeah. to produce in the worshipers or in the believers. I so, like the message Bible here. It says um, when they perform those animal sacrifices over and over, it says they were repeated over and over. They actually heightened the awareness and guilt. Made them more sin conscious. Yeah, they made them more sin conscious because they saw how much, you know, the, mm -hmm. the price of their sins cost. Yeah, and so year after year. So but in it just what made them guiltier. <laughs> yeah, so what God's wanting to produce is a, a new creature. A new creation. Our molecular remission Come on. With uh, our grandson Dylan, molecular remission. In other words, it's cleansing on a molecular level. Mm -hmm. In other words, no evidence. So look at verse 2. For then would they not have ceased to be offered if they would have worked. He said, but they continually yeah. re repeated uh, Hebrews 10 2. Then would they not have ceased to be offered because that the worshipers once purged should have no more conscience of sin. So really... Uh, righteousness has to do a lot with our conscience. Yeah, and the blood of Jesus literally can, you're really not free until your conscience is free, and you're really not free until, because if Satan can keep you thinking about, and you can still feel, and the memory of those events are you're struggling and you're trying right. to do better, and so the blood of Jesus has the power, here he says, that, that there would be no more conscience of sins. That was God's goal, was no more conscience of sin. And so other translations say that you would no longer be haunted by the sense of sin. In other mm -hmm. words, the memory of your failure, your past, your struggle, and even feelings and impressions and emotions mm -hmm. and pictures and imagination. He said, really, uh, the law could not produce that, produce but the New Testament, the new system is based on the cross and the blood of Jesus, and the blood of Jesus has the power to remove and redeem you from sin consciousness. You know what? While we're talking about this, one of the ingredients in the blood yeah. is the love of God. It's a demonstration. Yeah, I call it liquid love. Liquid love. <laughs> And, you know, these sacrifices that they did in the Old Testament, they didn't have that. They just had, this is what you got to do. This is the law. This, you made, you did so many sins all year long. All and this sin, is your yeah. attempt to cleanse yourself. 
There's no love in that. Yeah. You know? And they only saw God's a holy God, uh, yeah. difficult to approach because of our condition, uh -huh. because of our sin. But the love of God and approaching God with the blood of Jesus, whew, that draws you very close to Him and you feel accepted. You feel loved. Mm. You, he's brought us in. We're not standing back, but He come, you know, the blood of Jesus, you mm. say, is liquid love, flows from the heart of God, and it heals us where we've been wounded by life. Praise wow. God. So Jesus so that is sacrifice. Wow. the perfect sacrifice mm -hmm. to produce <clears throat> a new kind of righteousness yeah. with his blood. Mm -hmm. So you have a better sacrifice, right? perfect sacrifice, and you have better promises because you've got better blood. You've got the blood of God. And so through faith in the blood of Jesus, yes. then the power of sin is not only broken, but even the memory or the consciousness of sin is removed. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. Have you ever dealt with shame or guilt and felt like you would never measure up? When you understand you have God's divine approval on your life, it sets you free from a sense of rejection, inadequacy, or inferiority. When you know you're approved by God, you are then free to receive God's best blessings and follow His plan for your life. In this four CD set, Divine Approval, Pastor Mark Hankins will help you understand your divine approval the radical revelation of righteousness? Righteousness is a free gift from God. When you're born again, you have first class righteousness. You are 100% righteous. With this offer, we'll also send you the book, Divine Approval, Understanding Righteousness. Pastor Mark will help you understand that righteousness is a reality produced for us by the Lord Jesus Christ. Stop looking for approval and acceptance in this world. Receive your divine approval today. Your gift of any amount will help Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Call 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. You know, so many people suffer with the pain of regret and shame and guilt, maybe failures, past failures, and in that, they feel like they cannot move forward and they feel like they don't have the approval of anyone else. So I just cannot move forward in what God has for me. But you know, the blood of Jesus washes us clean from the past, from failure, from every mistake, and it can wash us clean from guilt and shame. So we don't have to live under the lies of the enemy. And he keeps trying to show us the picture of the past and the picture of the failure and the picture of the shame and the guilt. But we don't have to live in that because we have God's divine approval. And if we have God's approval, we don't need anyone else's approval because he has approved of us. So today I wanna to encourage you to get this book, Divine Approval. And this will help you and encourage you and keep you on the right path to see yourself, your identity in Christ, to see yourself that you have been made righteous. And it doesn't matter what the past holds. It doesn't matter what has happened in the past, where you went wrong, because you have been washed clean. You have been made righteous and God has approved of you. And if God approves of you, you have a bright future. So if you want to get that book today, you can look at the information on the screen, you can call or go to the website. I encourage you to do that today. Thank you so much for partnering with my parents. If you are partnering with my parents, thank you. Because of your partnership, this message is changing people's lives. And if it is changing your life, I encourage you to partner with Mark Hankins Ministries, and it will help to change so many other people outside of your sphere of influence. Maybe it's not someone that you can change personally, but because of your giving and your contribution and your partnership, you are a partner in changing other people's lives. Again, I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Thank you so much for joining us today. We want to thank all the Mark and Trina Hankins Ministries partners. Amen. You have made this ministry possible. Praise the Lord. And Lord. the Word is working mightily here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So we thank God for the Word is growing and multiplying 
Our desire has been to take the foundational truths we've learned from our parents to believers. We've felt an acceleration of that assignment, and now more than ever, we want to take the message of faith that transformed our lives to as many people, churches, cities, and nations as possible. We've been to over 30 countries, but many of them again and again, inspired by the word of faith, are still working. We believe if we'll do our part in broadcasting on television, through the website, social media, the app, and publishing books and CDs, that God will do His part and make sure that the message lands in the right place at the right time. Kenneth Hagin said, in the last days, the printed page will be the most effective distribution of the gospel. It's amazing to hear stories of people who've received our books in very remote places, such as prisons, deep in the bush of Africa, and many other distant lands. Our desire is to have our books translated and distributed in as many languages as possible. These books can be left with pastors and leaders who in turn can share the books with others. We believe people's faith will be ignited for many generations to come. Many of the nations we go to have very little access to the teaching of the Word of God. So we not only go there, but we translate and distribute our books so that pastors and leaders can continue to feed their faith. When they are strong in faith, they are powerful. We like to picture the distribution of the word like passing out ammunition to people. Once people have the right ammo, they're able to take their authority in Christ, live victorious, and make an impact in their world. The books are so instrumental in teaching because even if it's just one book, they can read that book and then they pass it on. That message is such a tool that can go where we can't go. The Lord continues to open the doors to new countries and languages for our books to be distributed. Our vision is to have the message of faith translated in a hundred different languages. Each individual is so valuable to Jesus that He died for each and every one. And if just one person can get a hold of the word of faith in any village, any city, any country, and in any nation, that one person can change their world. The exciting thing is, when we distribute the word that God gave us, there are people God joins to us to help, and we all become partners in doing this assignment. We could not do what we're doing without our partners, and we thank God for every man, woman, and even teenager that God has joined to us to help fulfill our call. When everybody pulls together, we're able to preach the word, not only in places like Africa and India, but also through avenues such as books, CDs, TV, social media, the app, and the website. We're so thankful for our partners, and somebody on the other side of the world is telling them, thank you. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries, Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. Thank you for watching.